Hey guys, it's Apod here. Thanks for joining me for my very first YouTube video. I, like many people in 2020, have decided to start my own YouTube channel. And my channel is really about one thing, which is just having fun with the Raspberry Pi. That's it. So with that in mind, I thought we'd get started uh, from the top, which generally means buying a Raspberry Pi kit, because um, it includes more than just the Pi itself. In this case, I happen to have a Canna kit here for the Raspberry Pi Model 3D Plus. Um, but really, you can use any kit you want, and we'll take a look at unboxing this one and what it takes to get started. So let's get to it. So the first thing I want to point out is that not every Canna kit comes with a micro SD card. So how you know is if the kit says starter kit. So I have another kit here as an example. You can see it says starter kit. It comes with the micro SD card. This one does not, and so it specifically says that the SD card is not included. So that means you will need to add a micro SD card. You can use whatever size you need. For me, 32 gigabytes is enough. The operating system will take about four gigs or so. So before we even open this up, we are going to flash the card and get it ready so that we can insert it into our Pi as soon as we open it. Now you can buy a pre-flashed card, but I wouldn't recommend it because it is more expensive and the flashing process is easy enough to do by yourself. So for comparison, a 32 gigabyte pre-flashed card is about $20, and I paid $750 for my not-flashed card. So now we'll get into how to flash a brand new card by yourself so you don't have to buy one of these expensive pre-flashed cards. Now I actually don't have an SD card reader built into my desktop, so I'm just going to use the adapter to plug it into my printer and then connect the printer to my desktop. So the reason I mention this is in case a similar situation applies to you. If you think you don't have an SD card reader handy, just look around. You might be able to use some peripheral like a printer or a camera, and then just flash it through that device. To flash the card, first download Etcher from the link in the description. It's not the only software that can write the image to the card, but it works very well and it is free. Next up, download Raspberry Pi OS from the link in the description. Again, this isn't your only option, but it's definitely a solid OS to start with. You have three choices, uh, with and without the desktop, and with and without the recommended software. We're going to go with the full-blown one here, um, with the desktop and recommended software. Now, if you see things like light or server only, just keep in mind that without the desktop, you will be left with just the terminal. Now, sometimes that's exactly what you want, but it just depends on how you're planning on using your Pi. Okay, so to flash the card, open up uh, Etcher that you downloaded. It'll look like this. Click flash from file and point to the OS that you downloaded. It can stay as a zip file, so you don't need to extract it. Then select your SD card for me, as, since I hooked it up through my printer, that's Epson for me. And then select that and click flash. And now we wait. It'll go through a startup process, a flashing process, and finally a validation process. This footage is sped up here, but it took about 23 minutes or so for me. All right, so we've got the kit, and we also have our card that we flashed earlier, so I'll just keep that over here. First thing I noticed that there is that there is a warning um, that says to not install the heat sinks or insert that micro SD card until the board has been fully assembled in the case. So I think we can probably adhere to that all right. So let's get this open. Okay. So all I've done so far is just taken everything out of the boxes, gotten rid of the plastic wrap and so forth. So the next thing we're going to do is undo the case. The top comes off pretty easily. The middle portion feels like it should be kind of stuck here. Um, it actually does come out. So what I like to do is just kind of put my thumbs uh, in here and just pry them apart. And it comes off more easily that way. Um, the next thing is that the pie should go inside, so which way should it go in, right? Um, just use the Pi to guide you. So there's a little slit here. That slit is for the micro SD card, which should line up with the micro SD card slot here. So it means we need to put it in this way so that these two things can line up. So it slides in 
Um, kind of, you can kind of feel it going under these notches in the corners. I don't know if you can see that. But it, it's sort of tucked under these two little plastic notches. And now it's resting comfortably in the tray. And then when we put this back on, again, we're going to use the Pi to guide us. So, you know, the USB symbols here should line up with the USB ports, of course. So it has to go on this way. And I'll just squeeze down equally on both sides at the same time. And there we go. It's a pretty hard plastic. I, it probably sounds like I'm about to break it, but uh, it's fairly solid. So now we've got the pie in the case. And um, we can put on the cover if we want. But of course, we have other things to do before we do that. Whoops. Cover goes this way. It matters which way you do it. <laughs> All right. So next up, we can uh, do the heat sinks. OK, so next up is the heat sinks. Um, it comes with two of them. So the first one is for the CPU. You have to peel off this little blue um, adhesive cover. We're going to put it right on the CPU. You want to be careful because we only really get one shot at this. So I'm actually going to replace it. I placed it poorly on my first take here. That looks good. Straight enough. Now the next one is going to go on the Ethernet and USB controller, which is right here. Um, it's tricky to get in there, but I see why they want you to wait until the case is on first. So I'm just kind of like pushing it almost to line up with the case to help me guide it in on there. So I'll just press those down a little bit. And then we're good to go for the heat sinks. Alright, so I put the cover back on. Now it's time to insert our micro SD card on the bottom. So you can see there's like some teeth coming out here. You want those teeth to line up with these teeth on the card, so that's how you know which direction it goes. So it has to go in this way. And that slot will allow for a nice, nicely uh, connected SD card here. Okay. So I brought in some of my peripherals here, and we'll just start hooking them up. So I plugged the power supply into the wall already, and I could plug it directly into the Pi, but the cool thing about the Canna Kit is that it comes with a Pi switch, so I can turn it on or off with this button. So what I'm going to do first is plug it into the Pi switch, and then plug the switch into the Pi. Next up I'll do the HDMI, because it's right next to it. and then we can do our USB devices, in this case a mouse and keyboard, and that's it. So we should be able to just turn it on and have ourselves a functioning desktop. So here's hoping that this uh, works, <laughs> otherwise that's the end of YouTube for me. Come on. There we go, that's what I wanted to see. Alright guys, well, I think we're going to end it there for this video. The next steps would just be to click through the prompts, get your Wi-Fi set up, choose your time zone, that kind of stuff. Um, what I really wanted to illustrate was going from a brand new kit to a workable desktop. And granted, this isn't some high-end gaming rig, but this is a workable desktop. And it's really impressive for the size of the PCB. I mean, you can go online with this, you can you have all your Linux utilities at your fingertips. You can play DOS games with this. It comes with a version of Minecraft. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool that you can do this. But in my opinion, we haven't even scratched the surface because there's all kinds of stuff you can hook up to the Pi and program with to build useful stuff. So that's what I'm really looking forward to getting to in my next uh, videos. So I hope you'll join me then, and thanks for joining me today.